Okay, so hi guys. Uh, it's been a while since I did a technical post on my page. So I, since I was in the lab, I figured I'll just make a video out of it. Uh, since I've been posting about the cobot for a couple of days, uh, it's, it's going to be very unstructured. I haven't really planned out anything out. But in any case, if you want any videos like this while I'm still in the lab, you can ask in the comments. So what you can see here is the collaborative robotic arm that we have in our lab. A collaborative robotic arm or cobot for short now the difference between uh, this arm and the industrial robotic arm that we have so that is an abb robotic arm the difference between the two is suppose if i were to do this so you could see me grab on to the robotic arm and it stopped so you can see it stopped now if i try to do that same thing with the industrial robotic arm it'll, my hand will get torn off i mean it's that powerful that's why we have it in a cage over here and the main use case of collaborative robotic arms is essentially for uh, places where, first of all, so the main difference between the two is, first of all, it doesn't have a cage. And it's essentially built for places where humans and robots can work together. So, for example, if I am a, let's say, uh, if I'm a human operator, for example, and I'm sitting somewhere here, for example. Uh, so, let's say this is my workshop table, and I'm working on a part. So, the cohort can pick the part up from my workshop table where I am working, uh, put it into, let's say, a CNC machine, which is right across the table across from me. And the machine performs this operation. Uh, the robot will pick it up from the CNC again, pick it out of the CNC and place it back on my table. So there is zero human risk involved since it's rated for human collaborative work, rated for human safety. Now, apart from this, uh, the main applications where you see cobots like this working are in the machine tending industry. Uh, so machine tending, uh, medical facilities, or maybe in you know, food industry. So to give an example of each machine tending is essentially if you say have a CNC or uh, you know, a CNC, a lathe, or mostly CNCs, but uh, you get my point. Uh, so the, uh, the portion where you uh, place the workplace, the, the workpiece rather, inside your CNC and after the CNC performs the operations, you take it out of the CNC. Now, usually a human machinist takes care of that job, but over time, I mean, human operators, they get fatigued and there could be errors in how they place a workpiece in the CNC, which could lead to errors in manufacturing. So, to account for those sorts of situations, we have the uh, cobot to take care of that for us. Apart from machine tending in the medical industry, you also have something called a clean room. Uh, so a clean room is essentially a sterilized area where uh, you know it's totally sterilized cabinet or something of that sort where you have you know maybe a couple vials let's say a couple vials over here where the robot is currently stopped and behind the robot you'll have maybe you know a centrifuge some uh, sterilization machine something like that and uh, the robot would be able to pick those vials up and put them in the machine so essentially like machine tending but uh, towards the medical industry uh, even for the food industry uh, you know, big robotic arms definitely can't handle delicate items like strawberries or grapes or anything like that. So that is where the cobot comes in. And uh, also when it comes to your, uh, how it actually operates or how it actually picks stuff up. So what you can see here, so this suction cup, it's a pneumatic uh, system. And uh, everyone knows how a suction cup works based on how you drink water out of a straw. You pull air. It creates a vacuum under the cup and you can pick the plate up. And once uh, you want to drop it, you let the air back in through the tube, like you can see here, this tube, and uh, it drops. Similarly, we also have this uh, mechanical gripper here. So it works on the same principle. You have uh, this uh, vent and you pu put air in through one vent, it opens. Uh, so, just a minute. So you put air in through one vent, it opens, and put, it, put air through the other vent, it closes. And uh, we also have a marker attachment here. So one thing that this cobot can do, which the industrial robotic arm cannot, is you can use it to draw on a whiteboard. And the reason you can do that is because of something called force control. So the so this cobot is a UR5E by Universal Robots, which is a company based in Denmark. And uh, one of the salient features you could say of this cobot is that it has something called force control. Now, what force control is supposed to mean is, so the end effector of the arm. So the end effector is essentially this portion where the suction cup is placed. So the end effector of the UR5 has a force torque sensor, which is uh, basically a sensor that measures the forces and torques that the end effector is experiencing. 
and so it's also the same way it was able to stop when I placed my hand and obstructed its path because the force stock sensor sensed the resistance that my hand was providing to the end effector and that's how it recognized that there's an obstacle in its path and needs to stop. So uh, for what force control is essentially supposed to be is it will output, it will allow the end effector to output a certain amount of force constantly in a given direction. So if we let's say take this black top for example. Now, if I have a marker over here and I were to initiate force control using this marker, let's say, you know, a one Newton downwards, one Newton might be a bit much, but let's take one Newton as an example. So if I were to output a force of one Newton downwards, it would adjust, it would always input one Newton. So if there's an obstruction in its path, it will uh, continue outputting one Newton of force, but it will still, it won't, you know, go through uh, the obstruction that is there. So in the case of the drawing uh, situation, the obstruction that I'm talking about would be this black top and as the cobalt is moving, let's say it's, it wants to draw a square, so it will trace a path of a square while outputting one Newton force downward. So that one Newton force is the pressure that uh, the marker would need to, you know, extract ink out of the nib. So the same way we write, we uh, trace a path on the XY plane with our hands while also outputting a force downwards into the paper. So that's the same sort of concept that the cobalt can emulate, which is something that the industrial robot does not have. Like most industrial robots don't have. It's not really necessary for them anyway. If you try to do this same sort of thing with an industrial robotic arm, you'll either break the marker or the whiteboard, if not both. And that's essentially what the cobalt is supposed to be, what it is about. So in any case, it's been a pretty long-ish video. If you want to know more about what we have in the robotics lab, you could tell me in the comments and if uh, I'm able, if I'm able to get some time, then I can show you guys. So, see you in the next time.